We're continuing with uh, assignment two today. We're going to try to submit something. And if we have time, we'll do the presentation critique today for it. If not, we'll do it next class. But you can shortcut to it always by just going to assignments on the home page. And then, let me close things I don't need open. On this assignment sheets page, you'll just have shortcuts to where you post. And you'll also have just one page descriptions of the assignment for your review. But I also give you some extra resources, you know, that relate to the assignment on this on this assignments page. So for this one, I have some slides about RJ Palmer, this creature designer. And my favorite tip that he gives is to make little pipe cleaner models of the skeletal anatomy of his creatures before he renders them fully digitally. And that's the idea of understanding the skeletal structure as we're compositing these things together. I didn't make you sculpt it in 3D. Sculpting in 3D really helps you understand it from different angles. That's something Digital Honors needs to do. But what we are going to be doing is now that we have our components to composite together, it's really about seaming it, connecting it, making it all make sense as something with its own anatomy. So that whenever we composite it into a, a scene, like we'll be doing for our first proving ground, we can match the lighting and the, the shading and everything will, will work because we've thought through that three-dimensional anatomy. So let's go right to where we post it. Let's see what we've done so far. So if we look at the tutorial steps, we've basically gotten to this step. We've layered everything up, and now we need to start smoothing it. So today we're going to be using direct adjustments to affect the, the levels, the color balance, the hue saturation. We're going to be using soft edge eraser, you know, first at 100%, then at lower opacities to blend. So notice the difference between the feet here in this demo and the feet here, right? That's just blending them in with the eraser. And then we're going to use things like that are new called clone stamp to um, kind of use as a tool, a way of extending textures and copying them onto each other. And then we've talked a little bit about dodge and burn before. That's going to help us change the, the lighting to all work believably together. And then we'll clean up all our edges and turn it in as a PNG, uh, like a free-floating creature, like a sticker that then we can put into any other environment. So this is where I am with my project so far. I've got those rough components. The only thing I've cut out cleanly was the tail. So let's open that up. And the first thing I do on a Monday is I always check my desktop. Anything that shouldn't doesn't belong there, I move into documents. Then I'm going to move my oh, that's the wrong one. I'm going to move my folder onto the desktop. So I can save all my work there. And then I open up my PSD document from the computer, not from a cloud document. Because those can often glitch or they're they're limited to connection speeds. So you always want to work from a local document. And that's a PSD file, not a PSDC. PSDC means Photoshop, uh, Photoshop Document Cloud. So what I mean is this is my cloud, right? This is a PSDC file that I saved online to back up. But this was my PSD that I backed up. So that will help you. Okay, now... I need to understand all of my layers. And this is where I left off. I need to make these wings work with this anatomy. So I cut out the wings pretty well. And I have my tablet, but I might want to move those wings back eventually behind the, uh, the spine I'm using. But before I do that, I might want to separate out these wings a little bit. And we do that with you can think of it as internal compositing, but I'm going to cut them apart. So this is one layer, but I'm going to cut it in half and then do Command X, which we haven't used before. What Command X does, it's just like in a word, a word processing program. 
it deletes it, it cuts it, but it also copies. And so it's floating on the desktop, right, or on the clipboard right now. So then I hit Command V and it will paste it. It will often paste it somewhere else, but that's because I wanted it on a separate layer. So I can angle it and use Command T and get it to fit with this anatomy. These are wide shoulders and little wings. So I'm going to distort the wing a little bit. Maybe even shrink it because I want them to look kind of dopey and really connect them with the shoulder blades of this torso. Now I can move both those layers back behind. And now how do I blend them in a little bit? Well, the easiest thing is to erase away from the thing that's in front of them. So this layer. And I'm going to do that with my tablet, with an eraser, large, soft. And I'm going to start at full opacity, just to remind you to get rid of that haze. So that's soft, 100% opaque eraser. And then if I really wanted to blend it in, I could take it at a lower opacity. Once I get down to the feathers here, and kind of blend those masses together. I'm still at 100% because I have that, that sky blue to get rid of. And I'm not sure if I want to do it that way or if I want to just do it with a one pixel feather so that these feathers stay pretty clean. Again, it's organic, so I can kind of cut out my own shapes if I need to. Because that background sky is kind of modeled with different colors, that makes using the uh, magic wand for it a little tricky. Okay, so now that I've done that, I can use my eraser at a lower opacity and start slowly blending and transitioning these. Now what would help with this the most is to play with direct adjustments. So I can move this wing a little bit down, you know, into it. You can see how they're kind of overlapping each other. It helps to transition the color and the texture. Not only can I change the angle, because I want a little bit of that ridge, and I can even, in limited ways, kind of pull at it with warp. But very importantly, I can use our direct adjustment. So I start with levels, and I don't want it to be too bright because this is the underside of the wing, but I can play with those mid-tones and see if they should go a little brighter or a little darker. It's going to a touch brighter. Then I'm going to go to color balance. And I'm going to play with the mid-tones. It looks like some magenta is going to help. And then in the highlights, let's try warming it up. And then in the shadows, cooling it down. Then maybe, because that made it fairly dark, maybe then go back to levels again. You can do this as many times as you want. Kind of get the contrast. And then the, the other one, because this is quite saturated and this isn't, is to go to hue saturation. So it's levels, color balance, hue saturation. Usually in that order. I'm just going to shift the hue left and right, see if there's any change there that helps. Maybe a little bit to the to the left. And then saturation, I'm just going to take down a tiny bit. Still have some color and some interest, but that is a lot more 
kind of within the wheelhouse than it was before. Right? Same thing with the other wing. If I wanted to do this at the same time, I could merge them back together. But the lighting is so different that it may be useful to do this these separately anyway. So this one actually might limit the highlights a little bit. It's a little too strong. And then image adjustment color balance, same thing towards magenta in the midtones. And as I'm adjusting it, it's getting kind of darker and darker. So then I might go back just like I did here to levels again, to brighten those midtones and maybe limit the shadows even a tiny bit. And then go to hue saturation and take some of that saturation down. Okay. So now when I start to merge it, it's going to work a little bit better. So make sure you can only affect the layer you have selected. So now I'm going to do a very low opacity erase just so those colors kind of work together. But I want to be careful not to make them too transparent. Right? But feathers are interesting. They have some translucence to them, so light does go through them. but not when they're all layered on top of each other, like on the back here. And just, you're paying attention to edges here. You're making little adjustments, like swooping that right in. And so we're kind of cleaning up as we need to. I'm probably going to have the head overlap this part, so I don't need to worry too much about cutting this out yet. because there'll be stray, stray parts. But this part I'm pretty committed to, so this part I can cut out now. Use my lasso with the one pixel feather. Same skills we've been using over and over again. For compositing. All right, remember, by having the feather, if you hit delete a few times it will keep softly biting away at the pixels so you don't have that little halo anymore. Now this I think is from a different layer. Yep. So let me find that one. Huh. Well, I guess it is it's right here. There we go. Kind of bite away at that blue. And if you ever need to do it again, you can always add to it. And even this slight blackish outline, grayish outline around the, uh, the claw here, I can bite away with that one pixel feather. It looks really believable. I can find my own edges for this claw so it's not so distracting. That'll do for now. Now, how do I blend these feet into this chest? Well, it's that same soft 100% uh, eraser to get rid of the hard edge up here. 